Hi, Courtney here today to talk to you about 10 things I do to save money and things that I'm getting back on track with this year and following. I've been thinking about this a lot. I always do it the first of the year and these are things I do to save money and kind of bring myself back into balance. Number one is I always do a no buy or low buy at the beginning of the year. I've done whole years. I do random days, weeks, etc. So I am doing a low buy for the first three months of the year. And um, low buy just means that I only buy what I need and I'm trying to use up what I have. If you like this kind of content, let me stop right here and say please like and subscribe. It helps the channel so much. So how many of you have things around your house whoop, that have just a little bit left in them? This is my compact makeup. I have three of these, same thing with how many of you have small tubes of toothpaste that need to be used or travel size shampoo and conditioner. Use that stuff up, get rid of it. Get down to where you have just what you need before you buy more. This is a great way to save money. It's a great way to reduce clutter. If you have something that you absolutely purchased that you don't want to use, a lot of places like homeless shelters and things like that will take your donations if they're clean and usable. Um, so other things that I kind of figured out is once you get organized and you're getting rid of things, oftentimes we realize that we purchased something that we already had. So an example for me was my kids borrowed my lunchbox and they accidentally ruined it. And I went and purchased another lunchbox only to realize when I was cleaning out above the fridge that I had one stuck way in the back that I forgot about that I purchased when we were traveling last year to Colorado. So I'm taking that lunchbox back. Um, the other thing is I purchased a new winter hat only to remember that I, my husband had purchased me like a winter uh, headband that goes around your ears last year because my hair is not so good for kind of the polo and wear beanies. And so those are going back to the store looking to see, do I have something that I can use already? Do I really need to buy something else? And so many times we forget that we already own something that's usable. And if we purchased it in the first place, we probably really like it anyway. Number two is getting cash back rewards. There's a million different ways to do this. There's apps like Rakuten and all of that. I don't use those. I have, I find them to be cumbersome. I don't have the patience for that. I'm not gonna sit in my car and take pictures, but I think that is great for those of you who want to and you feel comfortable with that. What I do use is we do use credit cards. I try to be mindful and keep an eye on what we spend. I check the balances weekly um, and I get cash back. So this morning I went in and I had like $183 worth of points and I cashed those in. I had some eligible cash back rewards, I guess the last quarter of the year. Walmart, Kroger were part of the pay yourself back. And so I cash those in today um, to help cover any expenses. So using cashback rewards. If you don't use credit cards, which I think if you have found that you're trying to get out of debt, that's not a good thing to do because people do tend to spend more when they're using a credit card. You have to be very mindful not to if you are doing that. And I don't think they're bad. I think they have a lot of good advantages, but I think if you are not um, good with debt or you feel like maybe that's not good for you, don't do it. Um, but we do things like we took out a Southwest Rewards card to pay all of our roofing bills on because we're about to have an, a grandbaby that's in Colorado and we're in Arkansas and Southwest has a direct flight. So we do things like we put certain bills that we pay every month on those cards to earn free flights. Number three is to look into programs. If you're very low income, I think it's called the ACP. It's like American something act. And it helps give you free internet, low cost internet, low cost cell phone service, and low cost um money towards a tablet or Wi-Fi. And so I don't qualify for that, but I have a disabled son who I pay his cell phone bill right now, and he does qualify for it. And so this morning it took me about an hour, but I filled out all of the paperwork online for 
his cell phone service to be reduced from $55 a month to $25 a month, so it saved $30, and he did qualify because he is on disability, he is on a housing voucher, and he is on, he gets some SNAP rewards. So if that is you or you are Native American living on tribal lands, take advantage of those things. Now, you may be saying, I don't qualify for any of that. We can all look at our bills and see where we can save. This morning, I've been working on that. I called our internet provider um, to see if we could get a continued discount that we got during COVID. They said no. Um, I'm getting ready to set up our energy bill, our electric bill. It will only save $6 a month, but $6 a month is $6 a month. On that phone plan, that saved me over $300 a year. And on Thursday, I have in my calendar to sit down and work on mine and my husband's cell phone plan. There is a plan I'm going to try to buy that will save us $320 a year. If I pay for one year in advance of cell phone service, it is right at $990. We are paying monthly right now on auto renew, and that ends up costing us $1,320 a month. So you got to look at where you can save and the dollars matter and where you can make money on your money. So for instance, I opened up some CDs in December with our savings. That will earn us over the course of 18 months about $5,000 in interest. Now, granted, we had saved quite a bit of money this year. Um, not everybody's going to be able to do that, but you want to you want to be able to pay less, save, and I watch the dollars. I watch my dollars because it is so much easier to save a few dollars every day than it is to earn a thousand dollars and so those are some things that we have done so scrutinize your bills find ways to save don't overlook the little ways here and there that just take a little bit of time number four is no buy and low buy i want to revisit that so i have no buy days quite often today is a no buy day due to the health uh, issues i've been having with my autoimmune i haven't been able to get out and do a lot like I can't go for hours every day so running my errands like I used to all in one day isn't possible so today I'm having what I call a no buy day and I'm doing things like running to the recycling center dropping some mail off at the mailbox dropping a book off at the library um, going to pick up my son's medicine that won't cost me anything and I'm going to return something at the store and exchange it for something else so none of that will cost me anything but it will help me get some errands done tomorrow is a low buy day so see I do this a little different right now um, because I have trimmed the fat so much in our life um, I am going to buy groceries tomorrow and get a shot but I'm giving myself a budget and I will alternate going to stores that tomorrow I'm going to Kroger. I have a bunch of coupons to use. The thing about the Kroger card, and I think Smith's and other grocery stores do this, they send coupons for things I already buy. Like they'll send me a $5 off when you buy $20 worth of produce. Well, that's not hard for me because I we buy a lot of produce. Or here's $3 off your almond milk that you buy. So they send coupons for things that you buy, like loyalty rewards. And I can often get 10 to 20. So I'll give myself a budget. Right now, our budget is about $6 a day per person for food. That is kind of the goal in the financial independence community is $2 per person per meal. And then you make two or three meals off of that one meal. So it's not like you're just saying, I'm gonna spend $4 on a meal. And this is a, a average. You're going to say, okay, I wanna spend an average. Well, six times seven is 42. So, oh gosh, I'm sorry, two, four, six. No, I didn't do the math. Our budget's around $150 a week. And so I'm using that also with all of the toiletries and things like that. So around $400 a month is what it comes out to for food only. And then toiletries, and I don't include the dog food and cat food in that because I've had to kind of go up in the price of those things because we have some animals that are getting old with special needs. So, but food is about $400 a month for us, or six times three, 30 is 180. So I just kind of round it off. That does not include eating out, which I do kind of just decide like we're gonna eat out once or twice a week, once a week together as a couple, 
And then once a week, I will take one of my children out to eat. And I also asked for gift cards over Christmas because I knew I would be doing the low buy so that I could use the gift cards to go out to eat. And I put a little bit of money back that I had set aside for Christmas and told myself whatever I saved from that money, I could use for my fun money for the month, if you will. Um, so low buys and no buys. Quarterly planning. So I've talked about this before. I do quarterly planning. I did that today. I look at what I have, up, have coming up January, February, March. I don't, don't plan on traveling January, February, March, but I need to reserve an Airbnb and some airline flights um, and probably a rental car. And so I will go ahead and set aside the money and I make myself a budget for that trip. Now that, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but I look at who has birthdays, what bills need to be, t my son and I, um, what bills need to be paid. My son and I have $1,800 worth of dental work coming up. So, and then I plan on how much I will save. We average, um, our monthly income is, well, I don't wanna say what it is, but let's just say we average about half of that we don't need to live off of, okay? Because we've gotten our bills down over the past 10 years so low that we only need about half. I save about two thirds of that and then the other third of that I use for those expenses like the dental care. I know a lot of you watching aren't in that place and it took me a long time to get here, but you can still quarterly plan. You can have a one month plan and a three month plan, but you know those things are coming up so that they're not shockers, right? Um, next is meal planning, number six. So meal planning, simple meals. Uh, if you've been around here a while, you know that we are whole food plant-based vegans. And so I am vegan. My husband is not really a vegan, but he eats what I cook. Vegan is more of an ethical stand. Whole food plant-based is the way that we eat. Um, so my husband eats whole food plant-based and occasionally he does have meat or eggs or cheese, not much when he goes out or if it's a special occasion or he's at someone's house, I do not. Um, and so I'm able to use a lot of the same staples to make different meals. So like I always buy potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, different kinds of rice, different kinds of bagged and canned beans, uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, different. There are certain things I just keep all the time in my house and I can mix and match those. Many, many years ago, I worked in a Mexican restaurant and in the back when you went in, there were all these ingredients. And if you think about Mexican food, they're just mix and match in different ways to make different things. A tostado, a taco, an enchilada. You know, they use a lot of the same ingredients and that's kind of how I cook as well. But having a meal plan for the week is great. I highly recommend if you want to follow um, whole food plant-based and you don't want to be vegan maybe, but you just want to eat more of those kinds of meals um, or less meat. Maybe you're trying to get your cholesterol down or something like that. Um, high Carb Hannah's Cheat Sheet, she, she does ask for your email, but the girl never sends me emails. She never spams me. I get maybe one or two a year. I will share that in the link below. Um, it's a great way to start, super cheap, like making lentil dal and rice, or making a vegan chili over rice, um, making a vegan Alfredo, things like that. They're really cheap and delicious. The next one is waiting 24 hours or putting things in your cart. So reflection is a good thing. I don't re believe a lot in regrets. I mean, I think that we all have regrets probably, but I like to reflect and say, what is this teaching me? Last year, I spent a bit more money on things like courses, eBooks um, that I didn't use and or that I didn't really like. And I found it was a lesson for me that I tend to use the same kind of, I like hardbound cookbooks. I like to be able to go to there. I save a lot of recipe in my notes on my phone. Um, I love supporting some of these YouTubers who are, I consider almost my friends, like we talk personally behind the scenes. Um, so sometimes I make a decision to purchase their five or $10 book because I wanna support them. That's fine. And, but I often will get inspired by their stuff but I don't use those things as much as I thought I would. I purchased some courses last year only to the tune of about $60. 
and they weren't very good, to be honest with you. They just reiterated things that I could have easily found in YouTube videos. So I'm going to do a 24 hour wait and I'm going to just say, like, if I decide I want something, I'm going to move it into my notes on my phone and make myself wait 24 hours. I'm going to move it into my cart on Amazon and make myself wait 24 hours before I buy it. I find that that helps so much with savings. Number eight is self-care or extra expenses like nails, hair, and massages. Um, I've had people give me different kind of feedback that I didn't really ask for, <laughs> to be honest. Um, over the years, I had one lady tell me that if I didn't wear so much heavy makeup, which is funny because I think sometimes with the lighting, I have mascara on. That's it. Um, and as far as eye makeup, I only wear mascara and a brow pencil. Um, I just, the way my eyes are set, it just looks like I have more makeup on, on video. So I already don't spend a lot on facial care and makeup. I will be using up what I have. Um, people have given me a lot of stuff. My friends and family know like that I'm super frugal. So if they buy some skincare and they don't like it, or they'll make me homemade skincare at the holidays, which I love, um, I'll use that. So in massages, I have a dear friend that I like to support who's a massage therapist, but I have a hard time spending that much money every month. So I schedule a massage quarterly. I also have an autoimmune disease and it helps a lot with my pain. Um, my nails, I have gone to only doing those quarterly or during, I say quarterly, I really don't even do them quarterly. I don't have a lot of problems with like my skin and stuff like that. I also have a toenail that I bumped and it's it's loose and I don't want them touching it right now. And I tried to tell them that last time I went in, it didn't work. They still massaged my foot. So only for special occasions. That's my new thing is only for special occasions, which is normally just during the summer. Um, otherwise I'm going to be doing them myself, which I get asked this all the time. Y'all, I literally cut my fingernails and file them. That is it. Sometimes I put lotion and push the cuticles back. That's all I do. Same thing with my toenails. Um, I also have some sugar scrub that I use on my feet every once in a while, but I'll just go for special occasions. On my hair, I go back and forth with this. I don't color my hair or anything like that, um, but I'm probably going to, now that I'm not working, try to go every like six months or so. I'm due for a haircut right now. I don't know if my hairdresser has a flu or what. She's not answering me. I hope she's okay. But um, I'm probably just going to go every six weeks or so and just try to keep an easy, manageable haircut. Number nine is travel. So I told you all I purchased the Southwest card and we're using it for business. We'll use the companion pass with Southwest. Once we earn the companion cat pass, I think it's going to take us about three months. Um, one of us can fly for free. So my husband can fly with me for free. You can change your companion once during the year. You only end up paying the taxes. The other thing is, is with all the points we earn, that helps to pay for the flights themselves. I will also set a budget. Now, I really want to talk about this. I'm going to move this camera just a little. Um, so I own an Airbnb. Ours is 115 a night with a $55 cleaning fee. That's exactly what I pay the cleaning lady, okay? Unless I do it myself. And a lot of people, and we have a two-night minimum. So I know that people set their own fees. And a lot of times when you are just starting out with Airbnb, it's really important to have a lower rate. So there are things you can do if, and I have found that if you really take your time and you look and look and look, you can find a very reasonable in budget Airbnb. And what's reasonable for you might not be reasonable for me. I have kind of a hundred to $150, 80 to $150 range, depending if I'm traveling alone or with my husband, usually 75 to 150. And then I look at what the cleaning fee is. If you hit reserve, you, it won't reserve it until you put your credit card in, but it'll show you what the total cost will be because Airbnb puts a lot of fees on there. There's a service fee, there's taxes, and you can't really tell until you know that. With my credit card, Airbnb is a cash back, um, pay yourself back, like I want to say provider, but I don't even exactly know. So a lot of times I'll just say, okay, we're going to go and I'll for, we're going to go for Airbnb and our budget is $700 for five days. 
and I'll look and I'll find one. And maybe I can't find one, so I'll decide, well, we're just going to go for four days. So sometimes I will actually shorten or lengthen the time of our trip depending on our budget. Of course, it depends when my husband is off as well. Um, I will do the same thing with vehicles. Vehicles are such a racket right now, but um, because what they show and what you pay and when they get there, they really try to get you on that. I've got to talk to my insurance agent about that a little bit because I feel like the, the car companies are really taking advantage of people these days after the pandemic. It's been a completely different experience for me prior to the pandemic. So um, give yourself a budget and use reward points if you're able to do that. Number 10 is what I'm gonna call mental, emotional self-care and physical self-care. And that's not your massages, nail or hair, that's therapy, support groups, and working out, meditation, yoga, things like that for me. I lump that all together. So I go to a weekly support group. I give a dollar. Um, I also have a therapist who I love and adore, but I get a lot of my needs met in the support group. Um, But I do find value in seeing my therapist once in a while and dealing with things. And so what I've decided is I'm going to see my therapist. Right now, I'm just on what I call the tune-up, like I'm at maintenance phase, right? So I'm going to allow myself four visits this year to my therapist, continue with my support group, And then the next one is with working out and meditation until my husband retires and we can go together or all that my illness gets under control. I'm going to continue to work out at home. I can go work out with my husband for free with his membership, but um, I don't like being around a lot of people because I'm on immunosuppressants and going to the gym and breathing sweaty air with other people right now. No, (laughs) no, no, no. Uh -uh. I get sick really easy right now. um, I was one of those people that never got sick before the pandemic, but now I get sick all the time. So I'm avoiding crowds of people and being in close quarters with others um, until I get myself back in what I would consider remission, temporarily anyway. So I hope this has been helpful for you. These are all things I do. And thank you so much for watching again. It really helps my channel if you subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And if you find value, share it with someone else. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.